you just follow it. Welcome home, everybody. <laughs> this is the Residency Podcast. I am Jeff Tomasic with Drew Belcher and Low Raven. Hello. We are here in Las Vegas bringing you our takes on the biggest stories in entertainment, business, hospitality, and pop culture. Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Episode 31. 31, dude. 31. Let's go. Cruising. Over the hill. Over Cruising. the hill. Yeah, we're, we're good now. This is, this is second nature to me. I don't think I'm ever going to stop podcasting now. Never. 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 It just I have to have a microphone in my face once a week once at a bare week. minimum. As long as you keep us in the top ranking, the the stats, the standings, yeah. we'll keep doing them. Yeah. Yeah. Until we're gold medal number one across the board every day, forever, then I'll stop. I mean, it's hard to compete with those fucking TikTok wiggle diggers. We're coming for you, Joe Rogan. I was I'm looking at how many reviews we have. We're at like 120 something now. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're yeah. fire. Yeah. Going crazy. You see everyone hyping a us five up Five stars. Too? I love it. There was a couple who were like, oh, these guys are douchebags, which I completely agree. But still yeah. five stars. You're right. Still, five, still stars. five stars. Five star yeah. douchebags. You can say whatever the fuck you want as long as you give me five stars. Yeah, five stars. that's it. Easy. Yeah, guys, if you have Apple, subscribe, give us five stars, write a review. Big help. Tell the people why you like us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Tell the people. Uh, we have another back to back to back weeks. This is guests. the first time we've gone a three yeah. banger. Yeah. Three Pete. Th- three banger. <laughs> it's three banger. Three banger. Is, three that, banger. is that a thing? That's a thing. Is that it's a saying? It's a double yeah, banger yeah, or yeah. a triple banger? I think Lo just made that up. Uh, <laughs> triple banger. Three Pete this week. Uh, we have the meal delivery maestro with us today, owner of the most prominent meal prep company in Las Vegas. You've heard about it. Foodie Fit. Alex Lee is here. Good friend of ours. Welcome to the podcast. man. man. Thanks for having us. What's good? Me. Do you like Maestro? Yeah. Is that I like a, it. Is that a good nickname? Was well, the Vegas Magazine said I was a meal prep prince? So who? meal prep prince. <laughs> yeah. It's all about alliteration. You can't say meal prep prince. You got to have the meal, M. So who's the king? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been like, no, bro, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. Foodie Fit is by far. I mean, obviously, we've known each other forever, but mm-hmm. Foodie Fit, I think, for sure, reigns dominant in the Vegas market. No question. Yeah. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to the Chipotle Steak Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I told him, I'm, I'm having the Al Pastor chicken bowl tonight for dinner. Yeah, no a joke. deconstructed enchiladas, also fire. Yep, yeah, it mm-hmm. might be coming back. Good, we're doing a vote right now. Oh, I saw that. That was a good marketing ploy. Yeah, that was good. That's good. Did you see that? Oh, do you do a, like a public voting? Like, like, yeah, we did like a voting thing. So uh, the, the three items that come back every two weeks, we we this time we had the consumers vote on it. Nice. But so, they had a dope piece of content. It was like you have the right to choose, like for voting. Yeah. But Chew as in like C-H-E-W. Ah, anyway, over uh, our heads. More I'll, I'll show you guys the video. Okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Drew is spelling and grammar. You know, he's A1. A- uh, um, all right, let's do a little background real quick, Alex, so we, can, so we can let everyone know who you are, where you came from, how you got here, et cetera, too. So when did you move to Las Vegas? I moved to Las Vegas okay. six years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So I uh, moved here um, actually from China. <laughs> I know. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that either. That's crazy. Um, so I, I'm from LA, and um, so I went, went to, to uh, college at UCSB with Andrew. We went to school together, and then um, I wanted to be a bartender. Yeah. Okay. I think that's yeah. when I met you. You yeah. were in Santa yeah, Barbara yeah. Oh, dude, being yeah. a bartender, yeah. I can't. I completely forgot. Yeah, I've known him since Santa Barbara days. Holy shit. Yeah, okay, yeah. UCSB let's go. Too. Him, me, Jay Farber. Yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Madison's and stuff like that. So I stayed with that company for seven years, and then I was just like, I, I need a way out. I'm just boozing all the time. So I met this uh, person from Texas, and he was like, oh, um, you know, he was, uh, I was opening up a, a concept similar to uh, Javier's called Palmia, and he was sitting there in Hermosa Beach, and he was like, uh, what do you say? Oh, he was like, oh, how's the, how's the food here, this and that? And I was like, I was like oh, you, you have this like, accent, where are you from? He's like, you know, from Texas, I'm starting this new company, and it's uh, like grab and go meals. And I was like, "Oh, that's awesome! Like, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard." And uh, I jump shipped, worked with him, but then basically, uh, my dad got sick. So when my dad got sick, uh, I basically left my career and uh, became his caretaker. And then when he passed away with uh, from cancer, I was like, "Okay, what am I going to do?" So I, I moved to China to be with my mom. Oh so wow! How long were you in China? Six months, and I hated it. Oh, wow. Oh, Damn, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where in China? Hey, we, we hate China, too. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> There's a lot of China shit talking here on this, too. No worries, man. And then, Wuhan uh, haters over here. <laughs> Wuhan's hot Where, right where now. in China were you at? Uh, Shanghai. So okay. my mom had a business out there. She sells, like, really high-end jewelry and stuff like that, but 
I just was, wasn't really digging it. So um, I, we took a client to Vegas, and that's how I um, met Andrew again, like, you know, because he was bartending on here, and he was like, yeah, you should come bartending if you don't like age, you know, China. And I was like, how much do you guys make out here? He's like, I don't know, like 12 to 1500 I was like, a, a day, a shift? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. I was like, all right, cool. So then, um, see you, China. Yeah, yeah later, yeah, China. Later. Get the I, fuck I, out of here. I, I bought a one-way ticket. I, I rented a what was like a, like a Kia Optima, and then drove packed like in a suitcase, moved into like his spare bedroom, and then started working at UBC. Um, what what little did I know though, because you know we met at Excess, right? I didn't know that you, you guys, uh, you can't live together. He, he's the manager, so I put that in my application. And they pulled me. From right. UBC? From orientation. Yeah. Oh, shit. I was like, oh, my God. I just, like, ruined the best chance of my life. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, last minute, he, um, uh, Andrew called Hedia and was like, I need you to do me a solid. So that's how I got transferred to Trist. And that's how I, I became a seasonal out there. And then from there, I went to Omnia. And then after Omnia, I wanted to start a meal prep company. So I tried every single meal prep company. And uh, the best one was this place called Ninja Fit Meals. I was actually his customer, so I called him up. I was like, do you have your own kitchen? He's like, yeah. I was like, cool. I was like, I want, I want to meet with you. And I was like, I want to, I was like, how many uh, customers do you have? He's like, uh, 300. Oh, it was actually way less. Yeah, <laughs> way, sure. way less. Everyone always exaggerates. Yeah, you know, like, oh, I got 4,000. Ish, yeah, ish, <laughs> ish, approximately, you know. But uh, I definitely understood the, the value of it. Plus, I, I came from a background of a meal prep company that had 80 stores. You know what I mean? So, when I moved in, I was like, cool, let's uh, let uh, my, myself and Andrew buy in so we can all be equal partners because he's like the best cook. Was this Bo? Yeah. Oh, shit. Because I remember Ninja Fit and yeah. I was like, oh my God, the food's actually really good. Yeah. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that was fucking Bo. Oh, that's that crazy. That was Bo. Okay, yeah. so the story all comes to fruition now. Okay, that's crazy. Yeah. So all then right. we uh, moved in there and, went, and then my last day was at uh, Omnia, it was in 2016. Labor Day weekend. I had to work that weekend, right? Yeah, yeah. get all that cash real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, started out in North Vegas, no AC, uh, working off those like uh, park benches, you know, like those, those, those foldable benches. Uh-huh. That's, that was my workstation yeah. for almost a year. And, you know, working in 95 degree weather. And I was like, at one point, I was like, is this it? Like, this is the <laughs> life of a, of a business owner. Like, you know, like work my ass off to try to like send texts to get food to people, whatever, whatever. And, you know, we net, like, 900 bucks. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is crazy. Ouch. Total. Total. Yeah, ouch. Total. You know, yeah, when, when I walk, when I, you know, on an average day, we would have six deliveries. Damn. And then Andrew, like, worked out the numbers. He was like, we're losing 900 bucks a week just in deliveries because, like, Bo does, you know, Bo's from Vietnam. He just doesn't really understand a lot of things. So, yeah. you know, he leased a car, but he doesn't know that when you lease it, even though it's unlimited miles, you have to pay the difference of the depreciation. And, yeah. you know, when you only have yeah. six dollars, you go from North Vegas to Southern Highlands, you know, to, you know, you know, back to North Vegas to Summerlin. Yeah. So it's like, it wasn't worth it. So we're just like, let's just keep going, keep going. Like the, the, the key is volume. Sure. So then, um, yeah, we grew it. We, we scaled it. Uh, and then, you know, fast forward almost, yeah, four years now. Four years now, you know, we, we have two storefronts. We just opened up our first uh actual like commercial kitchen, 6,000 6, square feet. Jeez, 6,000 is a lot. Yeah. And it's then, huge. you know, went from, you know, let's just say 300 clients and now we have 15,000. So. When did you open the first one on Windmill? That was in July 21st, 2017. Okay. Yeah. And then what made you guys want to open in that space? Were you just growing out of the previous space? Oh, yeah. Okay. And the old spot was so small, it was 800 square feet, that we didn't have a walk-in. So Cisco wouldn't deliver to us, and we got so busy that we had to go shopping three times. Oh, like, shit. Like, cook the first third, then go shopping. Like at, like, Restaurant Depot? Yeah. Oh, God. Damn. From North Vegas to the side of town, three times a day. And then Damn. basically worked around the clock. I was like, oh, my God. So we, we need to do something else. So the original concept was put two fridges in there because we have online pre-order, right? So I was like, just put a couple meals on there so if you forget to order... You can go and get a couple of meals and then transfer into online, and it just blew up. People were just like, "Dude, I don't like yeah. going through the online portal. I like to go like make my decision once I'm there." Yeah. So who are all the people involved in Foodie Fit? What do you like? Mean? Who are your partners? Oh, so Andrew uh, Kowal is my best friend. Yeah. Uh, he's like the kind of like the CFO. He worked for the Win for a bunch of years, and Bo, Bo, Bo cooks. 
Andrew does all the operations and financials, and I bring in all the business. I do all the sales and marketing. The fucking super team, dude. Yeah, there it is. Let's slang That's food. what you need, though, in a business. Hey, the trio and the trio. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. So what was, uh, we always like this topic, but what was the first thing that really kind of, you, like, because you said the struggle in the very beginning was serious, like trying to oh, put it terrible. all together and how bad it was, too. What do you think was, like, the first real move you made that transitioned you out from that those hardships the picnic table yeah the picnic table <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah what was like the first thing that really made kind of the the first big movement forward or was it just like a slow grind i i think it was um influence influencer marketing okay i mean obviously you know like that's how we re reconnected with that with that event i did that's what really skyrocketed us. for sure for sure you know um i knew the value of social media i think before a lot of people thought that you can generate revenue from it. I was like, just so much easier, right? I mean, in one day you can drive across town maybe to 10 places, right? You know, you know, uh, you know, try to get a client here, 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 as opposed to just having people tag you. We couldn't afford ads at the time, but definitely saw the values like definitely from Instagram. I think 60% of our business comes from Instagram. Damn, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. Okay. Yeah. That is quite a bit, though, too. And so then when did you actually open your first storefront? Like, when was... Because that's a big commitment, especially Huge if you're a commitment. meal prep company where it's not something where you're necessarily oh, yeah. having anyone sit down or eat there, too. Actually mm -hmm. opening a storefront was... I'm yeah. sure you guys all had, like, sat down and had a discussion, like, all right, this yeah. is a gamble. It could go either way, for sure. Dude, I had a Leasing whole, a space. Bigger lease, or yeah. slanging shit out of our house, because yeah, I know there's a couple seriously. homies that do that. Kind yeah. of sketch. Yeah. I had a whole grand opening, and that day, I think we had, like, 16 customers walk through. Lit. Oh, I was like, oh, start <laughs> sweating. Yeah. Super tight. Slammed. <laughs> yeah. Slammed. And, and with the, the model that we have, it's uh, cook, you know, like you, you basically have to pre order mm -hmm. and then front the money. So, like, I remember my first ticket, it was like $1,000, like 100 meals, you know, on the shelf and whatever. And I was like, oh my God, I hope this sells. <laughs> and it Because it goes bad. It's perishable. Yeah. yeah. And it's like very quickly perishable. Yeah. Yeah. You basically have two days. So the storefront can generate a lot of revenue, but at the same time, if you're not careful and if there wasn't people like Andrew who are, is very good with numbers, it can just juice all your profit. Yeah. All your profit. Yeah. Yeah. And but event, just eventually, stuff away at the, on the last day, right? Three days after, you're like, yeah, oh, you somebody just take away, the shit. Toss it, yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, it's like the grocery store thing, too. When you go to the meat and say, hey, this steak is 90% off. It's like, what the fuck? It's kind of yeah. brown yeah. and yeah. Kind of, yeah. I can kind of smell it through yeah. the yeah. 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 Expiration yeah, yeah, no, date was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> dry aged. Yeah, it's dry aged now, yeah. dude. 100%. Yeah. So eventually, though, that the storefront model did, did help you guys quite a bit, right? It, it doubled our business. Yeah. Because you guys aren't a traditional just meal prep delivery only. You actually have locations where people can walk right. in, grab and go. They right. can actually heat the meal up there. They can eat it there. That's kind of right. cool. Not a lot of people offer that. Yeah, 100%. And um, I think another thing that attributed to our success was um, when I started really following Unlocked. Oh, just and, plug, uh, plug. Wow, what a plug. plug. Wow, what a plug. plug it. And I was like, what is the similarity? I was like, it's taste. You know, because if you think meal prep, it's already healthy. It's, it's kind of like, you know, if you're, if you're marketing this as like, these are shorts. I'm like, shorts are shorts. Yeah. Right? It's the material, right? The fit. Uh, and then for us, it's the taste. Because it's pretty much, you know, calories in versus calories out. Sure. I mean, I've, I've, I've done probably 2,000 different consultations and stuff like that. So as long as it tastes good and you're consistent, it's easy. Like, you'll see results. You just gotta eat it, right? You just can't eat like cod and broccoli and brown rice all the time. The fucking That's when you worst. fall off and you start binging. Sure. And um, <laughs> that, so I just really focus on the taste. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, so yeah. Going crazy. And familiarity. Familiarity. Like when, when you eat it, you're like, okay, cool. I feel like I'm eating at Chipotle. Sure. Or I feel like I'm eating a pie from somewhere else. It's just, you know, if, if, if you feel like a pizza, I'm gonna try to get you something that kind of, you know, resembles pizza and stuff yeah. like that for your for your daily. Uh, for your daily needs, because I don't really see um, our brand as a competition with restaurants, because like you're not going to eat at the same like honey salt or something every single day. It, it, it's a special occasion thing. Sure. You know, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. As opposed to for us, it's like you know they're eating once or twice a day. So you know, um, another thing too was to rotate the menu, because everyone's like, oh, you know, it's much easier if you have a solid menu. I was like, but yeah try eating in and out twice a day every single day. You'll still get sick of in and out uh, yeah. I'll beg to differ, but for sure. <laughs> I don't know, twice a day? <laughs> don't, don't listen. Uh, he, he's slow, he's somehow underhandedly paid yeah. by in and out We still don't know yet, but... Uh, huge in and out dick rider, dude. Yeah, for huge. sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> huge. I'm sure it's gonna... How often do you change it? Uh, every two weeks, we rotate three meals in and three meals out. 
So the idea is... Do people ever come in pissed and they come in for like a certain night yeah. and like, come on, man. That's my what shit, is this? Yeah, bro. What is this bullshit in the yeah. fucking cooler, dude? Oh, I came for the on. Salisbury steak. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that's why there's like the, we're doing the voting game. It's really interesting how uh, some customers are just really, really wanting, you know, this meal. I was like, wow. Like they actually You're the one person that buys that, bro. Yeah. They, they actually, <laughs> one. They actually enjoy it. You know yeah. what I mean? As opposed to if you think of someone like who's on a diet and like they run out of a protein powder, they're not going to be like, oh my God, I'm out of this one. Like they'll just grab another shake somewhere. Yeah. They'll try to get the 20 grams of protein. Sure. Else. So. I want to go back to what you just said previously about having the food taste good, which I think is the most important part, especially when you're trying to eat healthy, because a lot of people who they're afraid of the word diet, right? Right. And you shouldn't ever diet because diets don't last forever. Then you fall back to eating shitty like you were once you do lose that 10 or 15 or that that goal weight, right? And that's what I like about Foodie Fit is the food actually tastes good. And if you commit, like you said, to longevity, mm-hmm. you will lose the weight. You will see the results or you will maintain whatever the goal is, right? right. But if you just try to binge diet and eat that steamed fucking chicken, that bullshit yeah. broccoli, <laughs> yeah. you know, like it's, it's, really tough. it's tough, dude. And like go, I, I was into, you know, bodybuilding. Jack, wow. I don't know if you guys see that. Uh, and the diet was, sucked, was, dude. Was. <laughs> was. Uh, the diet sucked, dude. Eating like that bullshit chicken, the steamed broccoli day in and day out six times a day. Yeah. You go fucking crazy. No. With Foodie Fit, it's different because you guys aren't really, really going after that crazy, right. strict market market demographic. Right. But now it's like you guys have blown up, man, just for having tasty food. Well, do you do you educate as well? Also, like, yeah, you're I, saying I, about like two thousand consultations or something. Yeah, like that, I right? think that's yeah. a big key too, because like, okay, cool, you can go in and, and obviously, like, if you guys don't know, Foodie Fit has like two different options of the same meal, right? One is like a bulk one, and one is like a lean one, right? And that's how they they do it. But then it's like, as long as people have their if they actually follow their goals, but they know what they're looking for, then you can mirror it out and measure things. But I feel like some people just really don't even know what they need. Right. So that uh, we do have a, uh, a health coach on staff, Charlie. So he, he'll build out your meal plan if you want. The one thing that kind of irked me with other meal prep companies, though, was that it was a uh, think of like LVAC, how, like they're trying to call you to get another membership, right, all the time. And I was like, I don't want my, my business to be turned into a call center. Yeah, don't. So <laughs> I looked I looked into brands like, Trader Joe's. I'm like, how do they just consistently get so many customers all the time? So obsessed, I, right? Cold following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. So it's like more of the tre- it's called like a treasure hunt, it's like a treasure hunt style. They want you to dig deeper. That's why they have a lot of like the new Ube, like pancake mix or whatever. They want you to go deep in there because then there's a higher likelihood of you buying more. Yeah, you walking yeah. past some other dope shit. Yeah, yeah. some cookie that, butter. Let me get that Costco. everything bagel yeah. salt. The cauliflower, all the way in the back. cauliflower yeah. fucking gnocchi and so shit. Good. There's yeah. always shit to find in there. Literally. Right. It's really crazy. So my whole goal was like, I want to increase the lifetime value as opposed to their check average. Because if you're like, hey, let's go on a three week program, A, it's like, you know, I can't babysit you outside of what you're eating. So you can very well just throw that meal away, eat pizza and whatever. But I'm, you're also giving them a stop time. Like after three weeks, like you're, like, you're done. I'm like, yeah. no, like just for come, sure. Come and go, come, come and go as you please. And if you really have a goal where, you know, you're, you're borderline type two diabetic or you're, you're just, you know, overly obese or whatever, we can, we'll structure something to get you where you want to be. But the whole goal is to kind of trick people to eating it. So, you know, we're, 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 we're skewed heavily female. So it's, it's more the, you know, if Carolyn came in, then she would buy something for you and then not really tell you that it's healthy and you ate it and you like it, then it's like a win-win. So it's like the health to me should be a perk. Sure, sure. You guys really skew a lot, a lot that heavy on females over guys? Yeah, I didn't really? know that. I, yeah, I always see dudes good. in there. When yeah, I'm there. seriously, I do too. I, I, but it's, Where are all the bodies hanging out, yeah. dude? Yeah. <laughs> but it's introduced by the female first. Interesting. So like the top funnel, like the, the, the first introduction would be the, the girl. So like, here's a really good example. Like, uh, where do we order everything from? Amazon, guys, right? You know, whatever's on the way. But um, Carolyn's a really good example. Like, you know, where did you get this blanket? Like, uh, she'll go to a boutique store, you know, because so they're willing to kind of jump brands. Sure. Yeah. Right? And test things out. Test things yeah. out. That's why, like, you know, like in the sneaker market, the uh, the brands are so firm because guys don't like to switch. Yeah. You know what I mean? But with girls, like, they're trying all kinds of stuff and then giving it to the guys. And the guys, the, the males typically have more spending power. So they'll come back like, okay, this is good and convenient. I'm sold. They're the ones that actually spend more. Sure. Have you ever done, like, a membership option? Where it's like, you know, whatever, lock, lock them in for X amount of dollars. Yeah, subscription kind of base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. subscription-based yeah. based business. So you can actually do that now. It, it can reoccur. It's just the, 
that typically, for example, like uh, like Netflix or like if you buy an app, it's a dollar a month. It's just one of those things where it's like, oh, uh, a good example of like Sirius XM. I, I, I've been for six months wanting to cancel it, and I just keep forgetting. I was like, oh, I'll do it next month. <laughs> right. But that's you know, why people want. That's why businesses want that subscription <laughs> yeah, service. Right. But if you have the subscription on a meal prep uh, company like mine, and you eat three meals a day, you're not going to let a thousand dollar charge. Go. Yeah. No, I guess you're right. That, for sure, that for sure. Charge would be too high for anyone. Maybe even scare people off in the very beginning. Right. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Three hundred bucks. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Bucks, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Because so because you can actually just go to the grocery store if the goal is to eat healthy. Yeah. And do the bullshit chicken breast yeah, and the veggies. Well, I think it's all about perspective too, you though. Because yeah. I don't know about you guys, but like I I never think I spend a lot on food. I'm just like, oh yeah, you know, I would, or or especially if I'm not eating out. So if I go to the grocery store a lot too, and I'm like, I didn't even eat out this month that much too. I must have saved so much money. <laughs> but I spent six hundred <laughs> yeah, at yeah, the yeah, fucking grocery like, store. Yeah. I'll go to look at my thing, dude. It's like one hundred fifty at Trader Joe's, two hundred fifty at Smith's, yeah. two hundred dollars yeah. at Whole Foods. You're like, oh shit. I think that's like another thing with food in general is that if you look at it as as like a huge cost, like if I were to say, hey Jeff, here's. Fifteen hundred dollars in groceries that you're spending a month too. Like, oh my god, versus two, two hundred, two hundred, two hundred, two hundred, two yeah. hundred. It's a little yeah. bit different. It doesn't mentally. feel like you're spending. Thousands yeah, it doesn't of feel like you're spending thousand dollars, dude. Because the actual price per meal for you guys too is quite low. It's sub ten dollars. Yeah, we wanted to make it affordable. So if I were to compare our brand to something like a car, it would be like an entry level Audi. I wanted to have a more elevated like uh, uh, style, but I didn't want that really hard entry point like a Rolls Royce or something where it's just like the top 0.1% can right. actually afford it. Damn, so shout out to the Audi A4. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, 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 all you girls it's, and guys driving I want to get a Gucci keychain. You know, nothing crazy, but just yeah. right at checkout. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, like you can afford it, but you know, but some people actually are the, the old kitchen, I mean, uh, low is just there. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually going to um, hopefully in the next like month or two create more of a like a custom kitchen. So if you want a keto meal plan with organic duck, and if I, if I can source it and if you can pay for it, I'll make it for you. Oh, so it's like bespoking your own. Like, That's yeah, kind of cool. That's yeah, really yeah. Cool. So it's literally like a segue between having your own private chef. Yeah. Like you know, And a meal prep. Yeah, so it's really for like the higher, higher end, almost like an American Express black, black card service where you just, you know, I really want the Chipotle steak with no bell, bell peppers and onions. Like, Realistically, you, I mean, you, we're all we're all grown ups. You can just throw it away. Or you, you <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. You have a fork. Like, don't don't eat it. Waste it. No, I want a sub broccoli. Like you know, that's what makes or breaks a lot of the high end people. They just they want exactly what, what they, they want. want. Yeah. It's I think too the variety is like like you said the number one factor in this too. Like if you even if someone goes to foodie fair, right, they need to be able to go and buy. Even if you're buying one meal a day, right, and you're buying it seven days a week, you're doing it every single week over a period of time. Like you need variety no matter what, right? Yeah. Even if like you know you eat the same thing over and over again, like you eventually need to change that. And I think you guys have at least how many menu items do you have now at one time? At one time, uh, roughly about like thirty five to forty. That's a lot. That's yeah, a lot. Yeah, that's a, a huge lot. menu. How yeah. many are breakfast? Because you also have breakfast items. Uh, about six. Which are all fire, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. They I tried are, the hula hash, yeah. like you told me is to. It, is it good? Fire. Very yeah. good. The breakfast is fire. I was Very having good. the hardest time figuring out how to sell more breakfast. It's only 10% of our sales. So what ended up happening is our, our signature active line, because there's carbs in it, more satiating, it started expanding because that's where the sales were. But at the same time, in my head, I, I was like, if we can do breakfast, it's it's a it's a very easy um, upsell, mm -hmm. but without actually like pushing like, hey, you know, buy more, as, yeah. you know, because you're not going to eat two meals back to back, mm -hmm. right? The whole thing is to eat more frequently or to take over another meal category that you typically either eat out or eat at home. With. Sure. So, the, when the chilaquiles and the hula hash came out, I was like, okay, we're we're onto something. We just didn't really put as much effort into the breakfast side because it's so easy and it's yeah. easiest. It's the easiest meal to skip, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I skip it. Yeah, I skip. I eat the time. same breakfast every single day, no matter what. Which is what? Just egg scramble, oatmeal, pan with peanut butter powder every single day. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Every yeah. single day. Yeah. That's why I, said, well, I always joke with Melissa too. Is like she knows how consistent. I've had the same breakfast for like seven years. If she ever walks seven years. If she ever walks downstairs and like sees me eating like. Crepes or something, she'd be like, oh shit. Something's, something's going down. Wow. Something's wrong. What? Jeff's just in there whipping up crepes, yeah. dude. Get yeah. the fuck out of here, dude. What's happening? Who is she? Yeah. It's been a bad day. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. real. Yeah. Yeah. It's only nine in yeah. the morning. Yeah, 100%. Um, we I'm always like to ask, ask this question, though, too. What's, because obviously you, you've definitely come out of the, 
out of the hole right now too. And like you're successful now too. You guys are expanding even more now than ever before. What, what was like the most epic failure you can kind of look back and laugh at now where you're like, holy shit, I cannot believe we did that or that happened? Um, epic failures. Cheat suite. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Cheat suite. Remember? Oh, get the. <laughs> I'm kidding. What's that? It, Go it, on. It, it, yeah, it, come on. It was a collaboration we did with uh, Unlocked and Red Bull. Yeah. Where oh. basically it was like a, a cheat suite. So you like you get a free ice cream sandwich on Sundays and stuff. And it, that actually did really well. I was just got it, got it. <laughs> okay, just want to dog on you real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're here for that shit. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep going, dude. Keep, Keep going. it going, dude. Keep it shit. going. Um, I don't know if there really has been an, any real epic fails because we kind of learn from our mistakes. Yeah, but um. Mm. Like, you know, no one exploded. Nothing exploded in the kitchen in the back too. Nothing went crazy. No, no nothing crazy. That's positive. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Was Was there ever like a meal item that you put out too? Or just like just did not completely work. Yes. Uh, the that, big flop. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we had this thing called the uh, Sh- Shanghai meatloaf. <laughs> Shanghai. Oh my god, sounds horrible. Was that your <laughs> Was that your idea? <laughs> no, it was, Bo, it was Bo's idea. Very hardcore Asian. Very hardcore American. Yeah, Shanghai, Shanghai meatloaf. meatloaf. What was in it? It was like uh, it was like it was supposed to be like 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 the dim sum lion's head with pork meatball with like cabbage, and for some reason Bo for a while was like trying to do like cabbage roll with everything, and I was like, dude, people don't like this, man. Like, <laughs> stop making cabbage roll shit. Like, yeah, and also you got to be very careful with the vegetables because if I get foodie fit, I freeze a lot of the meals, and then when you go to reheat them in the microwave, a lot of the ones with the vegetables in it with like the collard greens or like the broccolini, it gets so watery and really. soggy. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I freeze them, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then when you go to reheat them, you know, they're like watery, and so it's all bad. <laughs> That's just me. But if you get the vegetable ones, you got to eat them fresh. It's not nice there and crunchy. Is. Smart. Boom. How do most of your clients get their meals? Are they picking them up? Are they getting delivered? Are they, because that sounds like a lot of meals that are going out the door, but how are they getting to the destination? Uh, it's actually an even one-third distribution. Maybe a little bit higher since COVID for deliveries now, yeah. but um, Green Valley... Uh, Summerlin are all relative along with the online portal. So yeah. I just, just think of the online portal as another storefront. Mm-hmm. So ideally, if that's the case, you just open up another storefront. That that would just be more ideal for us because then it, it, ideally you can see a you know, 30, 40% spike in sales. Yeah. How how much does it cost to get it delivered? Like for like seven bucks. Seven, seven bucks. bucks. Oh, that's, a, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Flat that's good. rate. So if you order two meals or 20 meals, seven bucks. Yep. Oh yeah, my God, bro. That's awesome. Yeah, so for me, it's like the flexibility. Everyone's like, do you have deals? Do you have deals? I'm like, well, if you really think about it, I mean, if I want to give you a deal, you're basically, pay- you're going to end up paying more because you're, I'm, I'm selling you more than you want to eat as opposed to like, if you just want one meal, just pay for the one meal. There's no attachment. Everyone's so used to like these bulk meal plans, which I get, but at the same time, like we really care about the customer needs. Like I'm not here to gouge anybody. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I'm here to actually like help people like, if I, if, if, I would not be in the health business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's, what's the biggest difference? Obviously, like during COVID, everyone became a chef, a bartender. Mm-hmm. You know, they just became complete and utter experts. All these all these random fields. So what's the, obviously, there's mega companies and huge money in these national food delivery services, mm-hmm. right? So national meal prep services. Right. What's the biggest difference between like a national food delivery service versus like a meal prep company like yours that serves one market? Um, I think it's the branding, right? The, the branding, um, uh, customer loyalty, taste, and also a lot of them will, uh, you know, th- they'll ship maybe once or twice a week when, when you can order today and get it tomorrow. So I, th- I think of it as kind of like the Amazon Prime. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? So I can get it to you faster as opposed to, a lot of times you're like, I'm gonna start my diet today. So a lot of times we're like, okay, cool. Well, this company will deliver to you on Thursday. Or what day is today? Tuesday. Today's Thursday. 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 Oh my goodness! Yeah. Wow. Sorry. Yeah. If you want to <laughs> pay, go Sorry, to the yeah. Footy Fit on yeah. uh, yeah. East Side to go get it. Yeah. So if, if today's Thursday, they're like, okay, cool. Like you know, my my significant other wants to go on a, on a diet or what, whatever. Then they're like, cool. You know, this this national coming get it to you by Monday, as opposed to like just drive there right now. We'll get, yeah. you, we'll, get you, we'll get you squared away. So it's a much easier close for us. And um, I think you said too that commitment element is big too because at the national food service, I don't know them off the top of my head too, but I feel like the commitment for one of them would now. be 
They're all much higher factors. than being able, like you said, to go and try one meal, yeah. try two meals, try this one, see if I like it, try that one, see if I like mm-hmm. it, and then be able to yeah. <coughs> commit to like an official diet by getting one meal a week or one meal a day for a week yeah. there, or two meals a day for a week there. Is that your guys' goal to maybe eventually transition to one of these national delivery brands? Mm, we don't know yet because ideally I was like, you know, here's the hardest thing. It's easy to say you, that we want to go n- national, but then you have to build a distribution center, right? You right. Know? And then after that is like, you know, uh, the the barrier of entry in, into new territories. Like, who, you know, F- Foodie Fit is a name here, but who, what is what is Foodie Fit in Arizona? It's, it's, sure. It's, it's nothing. Yeah. It's nobody. Sure. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cost me a ton in ads to acquire them. And um, I... I think also the the demographic of Vegas of like who eats with us is like one of a kind, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. that's like a good the, point. The relationship building and stuff like that, as opposed to like LA, like the trends are completely different. Yeah, one hundred percent. So like what, whatever works here might not duplicate exactly somewhere else, and I'm not trying to like skew skew the branding yeah. based on each stage. It, it should be kind of. Uh, the same all around. Yeah. Sure. It's going to be a nightmare for production. If you look at this market too, right, you're in a city, in theory, that's a 24-hour city, right? You're yeah. in a city that is very dependent on looks and and yep. drives the whole, mm. I don't know, people, tourists and people come here for people to look a certain way, right? Sure. right. So there's reasons that restaurants are open 24 hours. The gyms are open 24 hours. It's a, it's a whole different demo than anywhere else probably you go in the country. I think the, I think the personal touch and over time d- makes a huge difference, right? I think going national might be really hard too, but replicating this in one other or two other cities perhaps yeah. could be the easier route, right? It's like, okay, hey, let me try to do this in Reno or Scottsdale or, yeah. or Denver or wherever else. Someone reach somewhere regionally that you could hopefully catapult and use like the tidal wave of the right, Foodie Fit brand right, here. Right. Cause it took a long time, right? Like you said, four years to just get to a point now where people are consistent. You're getting newer business a bit easier too. The ads that you're, that you're spending on are working and, yeah. and the repeat customers are actually <laughs> coming in. Right. It's like, that takes a long time to do. You want to go take advantage of this branding while not, like you said, if you want to go national, right, you need a couple million bucks, distribution center, right. crazy shipping. Right. And, and we, then you got your quality of food too, right? Cause it's, it's different from if it's going halfway over, through the country or Miami, New York, it's gonna take a day or yeah. two. Yeah, your, your food then quality. Then you have to deal with the courier. Yeah, well, you know, if they it, with breakage, right? If, yeah. if the if the product doesn't come in, so I think right now we, we're just trying to figure out the scalability side because right now you know we we are having some issues in the new uh, the kitchen just because it's like brand new equipment, um, a new flow of things, and um, my business partner Andrew like is just very 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 anal about like the health code and, and like following the rules and stuff like that. So just trying to figure that out because ideally we, we can, we, we can make about through that kitchen, I think 800 meals an hour. He said, Oh wow. An hour That's a lot. is crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know, what I was just thinking, I was just reading it just came to my head too, is that I was reading an article the other day on one of the most iconic American traditions is going to be gone forever. And it was about the continental breakfast. Really? Oh, dude, I used to love those. Yeah, so like the now, yeah. now with COVID, you know, the continental breakfast when you wake up in a holiday yeah, inn or whatever, out there, you whatever know? hotel where you go grab bacon and cereal and eggs and sausage and it's just laying out there too. Mm. And it sounds kind of weird, but the continental breakfast was like a major part of every hotel that you probably ever went to, right? Too. It's always included. Yeah. I was just thinking like too, wow, Foodie Fit is in a perfect form right now too. I was just thinking about breakfast mm. to go to a hotel and be like, hey, look, include one of our meals that are single package. You put them in a microwave and you can right. have that in the day too. And that's included with your thing or conventions, conventions, maybe perhaps too. same thing. Like that buffet style, Mm. like situation is done for a while. Like that's over. So individually packed meals, like foodie fit convention services might be coming in hot 2021. (laughs) Yeah. And that's what I'm saying is like the, I haven't even tapped really the, the wholesale market yet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We were, we were actually at one point just kind of turning business away because I didn't want the quality to go down or the consistency because the batches, you know, when you cook something that's one pound and then you have to make a hundred pounds of it, it's not times 100 of the salt. Like you have to, you have to kind of figure it out. So then now with this uh, new kitchen, we'll be able to kind of handle that volume and be able to take in something and take the wholesale cut. So tell, tell us about the new kitchen, by the way, just so people can really understand what it's like to scale up. So your kitchen right now was, mm-hmm. was what size? It's about a thousand square feet. And your new kitchen is what size? Six thousand square feet. That's a oh, big damn yeah, scale. Six times, yeah, yeah, for sure. Six x. And then our first first kitchen was three hundred square feet. 
You make it stuff on top of each other. So baby. my kitchen. Yeah. At the house. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We started out. Two with frying that. pans in an oven. Let's go. Let's go. We're in the business. <laughs> sure. That's yeah. great. Uh, so you you had some insane partnerships too with Foodie Fit as well. Yeah. Walk us through some of those big ones too that made an impact. Unlocked. Shameless plug. Wow. Double okay. plug. Double yeah, plug. Double plug. <laughs> Do- double plug. Um, it's just all the relationships that we have here. It, it, it's um, it's very strong, and then it, for some reason everything makes sense with with with, uh, with Foodie Fit because it's it's very flexible. It can be a lifestyle brand. It could be a, a diet brand. It could be a muscle building brand mm-hmm. or whatever. And I, I try to make it. Well, we try to make it um, have a lot of different avenues, and then just kind of use us as the uh, the hub of what you're trying to accomplish. Whether it's basketball camp, whether it's uh, you know for like a new mom group or whatever like that. So we, we try to keep the variety there just so I'm not really telling them how to eat. I just kind of have bits and pieces that you can build together so then I can expand the market a lot. Sure. You yeah, know the, what I mean? One that really sticks out to me is I remember you guys did like a, a PJ infused something with like Oh, yeah, with the Elix. Yeah, we, we, we did that. We, we did the Elix and... Um, I forgot what Romero gave me, but hey, was, we launched that one. We launched that one. It was really? like, it yeah, was, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah, we did. Unlocked, yeah. Yeah. Um, he gave me the really high end champagne. I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. for the dressing, PJ, right? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. It was like for yeah. a dressing. It was right? fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so we 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 definitely it's creative though. Yeah, we yeah. Anything to get the meals in hand because I, I I I knew or just to bring eyes. I think it's always about people not knowing. I know all the time too, where I just like see something and someone's like, "Oh, you haven't heard about this?" I'm like, "I had no idea it even existed." Right? It's just that discovery is never ending. Right? It's just like you need another reason for someone else to talk about it. It's like, "Oh wow, meal delivery. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't even know that was here." Yeah. People mm-hmm. are blind, right? Or that or Vegas is so bright and there's so many things that are happening and so many restaurant openings it. consistently here yeah. all the time and everything just seems really really fast and the expansion of Vegas in general is just huge right now. Mm-hmm. So you miss things quite a bit, you know, in, in every different sector too. But I think yeah. food especially, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you have some pretty big notable clients too. Can you, you know what I'm saying? You have some, yeah, snack. you have partnerships with the Knights, some of the Knights players. Now yeah. you have Raiders players. Reeves. You have Sea Fighters. We got Bryce Harper. Oh Reeves. my God. Jesus. Can we get Bryce Harper on the podcast, please? Come oh my on. God. Yeah. I'll, I'll shoot him a text. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shoot him. You know what? Just FaceTime him right now. Put, <laughs> put a little note on the yeah. meal. Yeah. yeah. We dropped off food at uh, Henry Ruggs. Um, That's dope. We'll take him too. Young yeah. stud, yeah. Young stud, had, yeah. Had a really great big, game last big game. Big breakout Bro, game. Big game. Yeah, I mean that, that, that's that's what that's what he's there for. Yeah, he's, he, he, he's super fast. But yeah, I I think the the uh, now that we're having a lot of local teams coming in, I, I think the athlete is the perfect um, influencer in my in my eyes for. Uh, Generating more revenue all day. Yeah, this is the all first day. time Vegas really has really yeah. influential people that are locals. It used to be like Wayne Newton, right, yeah. or like fucking yeah, no. Donnie and Marie. I was like, yeah. oh, that was the biggest all local day. influence. Yeah. yeah, I would absolutely just send thousands of dollars of Foodie Fit to all these guys' house and just like <laughs> stock the fucking fridge. Now Non-stop. you have athletes. Now you Non-stop. have performers. Now you yeah. have resident DJs and like yeah. The cool, Real the, the cool thing about this too is it, an influencer can be so many different things for a food program because there's so many different goals, right? Whether it's maintaining, whether it's losing weight, whether it's muscle building, whether it's athletic, you know, whatever it may be to, whether it's just general diet, right? And whether it's time, you know, mm-hmm. some people just don't have time to cook and they yeah. just need yeah. something there for them. Like their folks are making food for their kids or whatever it is. There's so many different reasons yeah. to go there, whether it's you know, one meal, a couple meals a week, tons of meals a week or whatever it may be. So I think it's like you're in a great place too where the influencer for And great food, timing. Yeah, the for timing food right now is great can too. Be, can be a lot. Yeah, we're, speaking of timing, do you think COVID has increased the demand for meal prep in general? It has increased yes and no. So when it hit... In April, business dropped 50%, even though we were considered essential. Like, my life hasn't changed. Well, people weren't busy anymore. They weren't they don't need. They don't need you. They're, they're at home. They have plenty of time. I'm a full-time <laughs> chef, dude. Plenty of time to cook. Sure. I'm a hey, what's going on today? Now. I'm just making breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know? <laughs> yeah. You need me. I'll be in here. Right. And then the, I think the, the, the biggest thing is that they didn't know what uh, COVID was. You know what I mean? It was like yeah. a fear. Like, am I going to turn into a zombie? Am I going to die? This and that. And then now that's... We're getting more information on it. Some people are just like, "Fuck it, I don't care." You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, fuck it, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Hey, yeah, fuck it. But uh, to that point, um, I think a lot of uh, people need to focus, especially local, is is is, um, is this. 
retention is much more important than new acquisition right now. Yeah. Right? Because even if if you're getting this uh, the stimulus, you're not making as much as you were. So now people are like, why should you earn my, my money? As before, it was like, it's yeah. just a given. Yeah. Right? I was like, it's much cheaper to just keep your customers and keep them happy than to acquire new ones. Because right now, there's not a lot of people that are just looking for to spend more money on something. They're trying to save and just survive. Yeah. Right. And they're already familiar with your product, right? You've Correct. already got them in. They know what they like. Yeah. And now you just keep feeding into that rather than trying to introduce your brand, introduce your product. And it's yep. taking more time and effort and money, resources out yeah. of your well, work and brand. You know, 100%. This, you, know, you know, typically right now would be audition season. So yeah, perfect time for you to open ready. a 6,000 square foot new kitchen, yeah, baby. Let's go. <laughs> How funny is that? So that we actually uh, got the the loan approved, started construction, and then COVID hit, and they denied our loan. Oh shit! And we're already two hundred grand deep in construction. And the guy was like, "Where's my money? <laughs> I need oh, I need fuck. my bread, bro." I was like, "Oh my god, what are we gonna do?" I think Andrew's like really, really, really good with the numbers, and he always, he always has like a plan A, plan B, plan C. So we had to renegotiate, but we had to do a ten year loan instead of a thirty. Instead of a thirty, yeah. yeah so we had to draw four hundred grand. On Where's it. the kitchen? Rancho 95. So is the kitchen then going to serve as the hub and then which will push out all the food to each specific location? Correct. Are you going to do deliveries from the main, the kitchen, or the deliveries are still going to come from the two storefronts? As of now, it's coming out of the kitchen, but when we do have more stores, um, it's going to be last mile logistics. Got it. Yep. Right? So that's kind of how... We thought of that because of, of what Walmart Plus does right now, right? Because Amazon, same thing, have one distribution center. They'll get it out to you the next day. The only advantage that Walmart has is that they have more locations than them, so they can get to you faster. Yeah. yeah. So that's why they're doing the same day. So eventually in the future, when we have a few more stores, we're going to do last mile logistics through the stores. Got it. Yeah. That makes sense. That's, that's great. great. I'm like starving that. now, by, by the way. Yeah. Essentially. <laughs> by the way, my wife uh, wants me to tell you to bring back the Huevos Ranchero. The way those ranch, that's an old food. That's an oldie. She's Mexican and she's upset. <laughs> and, she's and, up, and, and, she's, pregnant. and she's pregnant. And pregnant. And pregnant. So, and pregnant. you know what I'm saying? What about the chilaquiles? Bring back the way I'm. Look, <laughs> I have, I'm the messenger. I don't kill me. Bro. I have you know no more information. He's getting it from both sides. It's if, like, you, oh. if your pregnant wife says, hey, bring home the Ravens Ranchero and you come home with the wrong thing, there's, there's, there's problems. Hey, babe, I brought the chilaquiles. Yeah. <laughs> what? She throws it against the yeah. fucking wall. Get out. Get out. I'll try to make Ravens Rancheros myself. Ruin it even more. Uh, but just put that this on your tastes, radar, this okay? This tastes like scrambled egg with a pe- uh, peanut butter powder. In yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. All, that's <laughs> all that I know how to do. That's my main two things. He's not going to be able to find any of that in the kitchen in the morning. 100%. It's all going to be gone. 100%. <laughs> um, that's great, man. Look, congratulations on everything, too. This is, like, oh, honestly you. building a business yeah. and making it this big. And the, the evolution of it is going to be crazy. So when do we expect the new kitchen to be ready? Are we celebrating? Anytime soon? Not right now. Yeah, we're, we're running like 700 hours a week of overtime right now. So, Woo. yeah, but that you, you got you to pay to play, right? Because you, there's a lot of questions like, you know, for example, like, you know, uh, when you first opened up this place, like, like, where does this go? I'm like, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, where <laughs> yeah. do I put this when you're done with this? Right? That's a lot of trial and error. Ton of trial and you'll and you'll change it. I'm sure, especially the kitchen layout once you actually start yeah. using it and understand. Wait, you guys are using it though, right? It's already yeah, open. Yeah. yeah. So so does oh, that, really? Does that yeah. one have it's a store operation? No. No. So just no. kitchen. Just kitchen. Got it. Okay. Just kitchen. So it, we. So two storefronts, one kitchen, and then the online platform. Is that a crazy feeling to know that you started a super small meal prep company, like you said, on like a like a bench bench, <laughs> and now you need a six thousand square foot facility to handle demand? Like, is that a crazy? That's a crazy feeling, right? Yeah. <laughs> Did yeah. you think you were going to get here? No, I I thought I was just going to. It's going to be like a little side hustle. I, I thought Green Valley was it. Like, you know, to, to open up that storefront, to actually be able to invite people to a storefront was enough. And it just, the, the demand just grew. And I think the, the key to it was, was just to be uh, consistent with, your, with, with the service. And, you know, we were losing a ton of money in the beginning by delivering every day. Like, ideally, you want to just, like, bulk up all your deliveries and deliver once a week. But I was like, you need to stand out. You have to stand out, and you, and another thing is to solve uh, people's problems, which is you know I want more delivery days, you know more flexible timing and stuff like that. So really listening to the customers. Yeah, they also the Green Valley store, the original one you guys have been to, right? Yeah, yeah. The grab and go. So I mean, that's they the get, one I go to every time. Yeah. I, so I mean, they house. they got the two spaces next door. Now it's their their office f- facility now. Yeah. Instead of their little cram spaces, little <laughs> cubicles that they had in the <laughs> main store. Yeah, they're killing it. Yeah. Well, 
Congrats, my man. I thank you for coming on here. This was this is awesome, and hopefully, you you're inspiring some entrepreneurs out there. Just get off their asses and go do it. Right, start wherever you have to start. You know, yeah, you and never it's homegrown, know. man. Here in Las Vegas, exactly. It's awesome. Yeah, so dope. Um, so we're here for the journey, wherever whatever comes next. Um, we do end every episode with our favorite segment called "Eat a Drink and Binge It." So we're going to look at your recommendations on somewhere, something to eat for these for for, for the listeners, uh, something to drink, and then something to binge. Okay. It can be anything, right? Yeah. It can be a book, movie, book, movie streaming, show. podcast, whatever it is. To uh, I'll start so you can go last. Okay. Um, what my are you eat it. eating, man? My what eat it. Uh, have you ever been to Big Jerk Caribbean? Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. Sorry about fire. The piss. Hey, so I went to high school with those homies. Really? Big Jerk is fire. Yo, yeah, the, the plantains? Fire. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. Unbelievable. The sauces are incredible. Yeah. I feel like it's not, it's like one of those um, under abused like restaurant concept niches, yeah. right, too? There's not a ton of Caribbean, Caribbean restaurants yeah. uh, like around the place, too. So it opened right by my house. Yeah. We finally went. So good. It's Super amazing. small, really good food, though. Yeah. They're always like grilling in the back, like it's it's amazing. It's and they're opening delicious. a second one. Second one I read too. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, it's amazing. Them. Yeah. So expanding. That's so fine. shout out to Big Jerk. So if they're you're in Las Vegas, mac and cheese is yeah. the heater. Yeah. Oxtail yeah. mac and cheese. I never oh, had it. They have the, the oxtail plate and their side mac and cheese is probably one of the best I've ever had. Super good. Oh, I'm going. Woo! Yeah. I'm really going. good. I'm fucking hungry now. Um, all right. What are you huge. What are you eating, Lo? I'm a huge, huge French fry guy. Okay. Have you guys been to Payments? You guys know what Payments is? Bro, Payments is? is fire. What do you mean, have I been to Payments? Payments so is Payments, eagle, huh? Medi- Mediterranean food, but their French fries are off the fucking charts. Probably top three, top five, top three French fries in the world. With the seasoning on them? With the seasoning. They're, they're fucking they're fire. Incredible. In the world? World. Nah, I mean, yeah, world. they're fire. Wow. They're fire. The they're fries fire. are insane. So Payments, you can go get your kebabs, and they actually have a really good, um, like, what's it? Like, uh, what's that? Fuck. It's like Italian food. But it's really good. They have multiple locations, payments? There's one on Maryland by like UNLV. No, yeah. that, one, that one shut, that one, shut they down. closed that one, so yeah. that was the OG. Uh, you you went to the one on Sahara, right? I went to the one on Sahara. Sahara, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Vapeco next door. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Lots of plugs in the episode today. Lots of plugs. All right, Drew, yeah. what, are you, what are you eating, Drew? Uh, fuck, what do I have written down? Okay, uh, shout out to all my Hawaiian homies. Uh, Lihing Moi candies. Yeah. So you get like Sour Patch Kids or gummy bears or okay. whatever, yeah. and they sprinkle this powder on it. It's called Lihing powder. Yeah. It's bomb. It's like salty, but tart, but sweet. It's like a weird, it's not like tahine, like for, like the Mexican it's not like, homies shit. like spicy sweet? No, it's like tart, sweet, but salty. I like that. They put on everything. You put they on put mangos, on everything. You put on yeah. fucking They put the shit bears. on everything. Like the Mexicans do with the, the tahine. Yeah. It's Lihing powder. It's, Lihing I, I love it, bro. It's fire. It's yeah. the best thing after you take like tequila shots, you take a little dab of that shit. Incredible. Okay, really? Yeah. I man. usually just do a little dab of cocaine or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. After my tequila yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. uh, Lehing powder. Lehing powder. Mm. Lehing powder. I'll, I'll, I'll bring some next. I, bought, I, I ordered a big fucking thing on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Like the gummy oh, bears really? Just shit. the whole huge yeah, thing? Yeah, dude. Because I was like, oh, I got gummy bears, lehing powder. Shh. Okay. Yeah. Fire. All right, I like that. All right, what do you, here, here's a test. What are you mm. eating? What's your recommendation for the people? I think off the top of my head, uh, going out the Hawaiian's. Island flavor on Eastern. Fire. Yeah, fire. Really good. But one thing that uh, they have there that I haven't seen anyone else have is a bowl. You usually do tuna poke, but you can sub spicy tuna, like spicy tuna and rice bowl. Oh, really? It's really good. And they're, they actually have a really good um, kalbi with, with like the bone, beef bone in it, but it's like a ramen saute, like chow mein, fire. What? Okay. Yeah. A super thick kalbi, too. I just went to the one on Sky Canyon, the new one that opened. Bro, oh, it's the same owner? Yeah, yeah. Super thick cowbie, bro. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> okay. Nice. Heat. A lot, a lot of Vegas ones. It. That means they're bro, cutting heat. it. Yeah. Heat. That means they're cutting yeah, yeah. Uh, My drink is actually tequila. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow. Villa One. Have you had Villa One tequila yet? Super good. Villa One. Yeah. No, it was like a partnership. Joe Jonas? It was, it's partnership with Stoli, essentially, is the yeah. guys behind the two. And they, it's John Varvados and, and uh, Nick Jonas. Nick Jonas, yeah. Um, but it's super good. So I had the extra añejo. Very good. Really? Dope. Very good. Extra añejo. Yeah. Wow, very baller. good. Right. Here's a really some insight about Villa One is when they were coming to market, they were offering like dinners with Varvados. So you can like, he would yeah. come and hang out and like you would. Like actual John Varvados? Yeah. yeah. That was kind of like their marketing. Pretty sick. Places. That's pretty rough. Sick. Yeah. 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 It yeah. It's nice to have people on the payroll. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Nice to have ownership partners. Uh, yeah. Really good. I was actually very, very pleasantly surprised. Very good. Yeah. I would try it out. What so one of my drinking? previous ones was like Asian market, right? Drink section is my thing. But remember I was telling you guys to get those aloe juices, right? With the aloe in it? Yeah. They yeah. have them at the fucking like corner, um, 
gas stations now, and they're like super modernized. The brand is Allo, L A L O, with a little thing over it. That's the one I tried. Yeah, bro, I, I, I've seen them. I've seen them. Is that the same one you were talking about? No, so I was talking about oh, the shit. super Asian okay. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the, with like the aloe jellies in it. With aloe jellies in it. Ooh. But now they have that one. <laughs> yeah. At the mark, but the the one I'm saying to get is the watermelon peach one. Okay. Insane. I I, was, I didn't really love the aloe juice that I got. Yeah, no, really? I I like the coconut one. That Jeff thing. The, that, the coconut oh, that, one was that's fire. You brought. Yeah, yeah. But no. the aloe, I don't know. Watermelon aloe. peach with the little jellies in it. What is the benefit of aloe? Like, like it seems like so how like bull, it's like a bullshit healthy. It's you, like you smoke it off mirrors. the fucking plant. Or you're drinking your aloe. You know, it's just like <laughs> you're glistening. Yeah, it's, give me this. <laughs> nah, bullshit. bitch, get out of here. What's aloe juice? Yeah. Um, all right, what do you drink? What do you I got drink? some aloe juice for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not sold in stores. Uh, so I'm gonna go a little on my Jeff tip wine route. Oh, uh, wow. So I went and had dinner at Cleaver. Shout out to Nectali. Hey. Yeah. Uh, Orange Swift Mercury Head. It's their California cab. It's just a plain black bottle mm. uh, with just a nice little mercury like coin uh-huh. for the logo. It's, it's a very recognizable bottle. Uh, but Orange Swift Mercury Head. Very, very nice full-bodied California cab. We, excellent with the steak. Price point? Uh, like in the restaurant? Yeah. I think it's like two hundred, maybe. Oh, it's not. Uh, you, I, you can get it at route, for yeah. Sure. You, no, you can get it at Lee's for like maybe one thirty. Oh yeah, I that's think. A yeah, nice, yeah. It's a cool nice, bottle, yeah, yeah, yeah. But nice uh, Mercury head stock yeah. up. Okay, I like that. It was Je- is Jeff searching right now? What are you doing? Yeah, I, yeah. Might, I might. <laughs> <laughs> like, a mercury oh, and head. delivered. Yeah, or in Swift. Who, uh, who's the same uh, winemaker that makes like Prisoner and okay. Papillon it. and all that shit? All right, what are you? Uh, what are you rocking? What are you drinking? Give it doesn't have to be people. alcohol. It can be whatever. Yeah, it can be, it can yeah, be. It can be stupid aloe juice. It can be wine. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually got, gone out in a while, but uh, we've had some nights. We've had some nights. So, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Uh, this is non-alcoholic, uh, but it's a coconut water called Numa. But it's a flavor of coconut water, thirty calories. I'm a big coconut water guy. But the the flavor that surprised me the most that's amazing is chocolate mint. Chocolate okay. mint coconut water? Ooh. Yes. Oh, is this Ooh. the one that's at, that's at Foodie Fit now? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Plug. Shame no, I saw it. Plug. 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 Like, I saw Let's not forget I, the plug. I literally, I went to go, uh, I, I got Foodie Fit the other day, and I walked out, but it was after I paid, and I was like, shit, and it looked good. I looked at all of them, too. It was like a bunch of flavors. Yeah, yeah, Okay, that's I'm going to try awesome. one now. It's 100%. Really, really good. What was the one that we tried? What was it called? The pink one? Harmless Harvest. Harmless Harvest. Harmless Harvest. Harvest. That one was fire. Yeah. That was fire. And but this it's one's also good? $15. It's not cheap. For well worth it. Jesus. Not cheap. Harmless, yeah. Harmless yeah. Harvest? Are you kidding me right now, too? Have you had it? No. Oh, it's like it's just it's like pink. drinking lotion, bro. <laughs> you feel so hydrated, bro. <laughs> yeah, when you drink that down your throat, Literally. just lotion, bro. Yeah. Whole Foods actually requires you to buy one pretty much every yeah. time you walk yeah. in. Oh, hey, here's your Harmless Harvest required. We'll charge you on the way out. Move along. Move along. It's a good one, though, too. What's the brand called again? Numa. How do you spell it? N O O M A. Oh, Numa. 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 I'll swing by Numa. Foodie Numa. Fit. And Numa. With two O's, not a U. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was a U. Uh, all right, my binge is actually a show called The Capture. Super good. It's uh, on. It's like it was a BBC show, and now it's on NBC. It's like a uh, crime drama, but fire. Like actually, it's a real the capture. Like, like the capture, like thriller style. Just started it. Um, like seriously, super good. And I'm, I've honestly run out of shows now, too. I'm not even really watching anything anymore, too. It's over. <laughs> COVID, ru- COVID ruined every, everything. I've seen everything now. on Netflix. Yeah, it's now it's just like moving on completely from... from. But I found this one, too. It's called The Capture. I, I would definitely check it out. Nice, nice. Uh, mine is HBO Max, season two of His Dark Materials. So I watched that for the first season. It sounds sexy. Yeah, yeah. what was that? It's a, yeah. it's a, what page of Pornhub is that yeah. on, bro? It's after <laughs> hours on Showtime. Yeah. 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 Skin, skin of Max, yeah. HBO Double Max, yeah. you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, no, so it's the story, it's from a book, it's like the Golden Compass story, right? It's like the, the oh, little yeah, girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but Lin-Manuel Miranda's in it. Um, and it's season two. The first season was really good. And I, I usually don't like shit like that, very fantasy driven. It was actually really good. So season two on HBO coming okay. out. I have like, absolutely I like, no idea what you were talking about. I feel about. like Lowe's binge it taste is kind of like they're he, crazy. He explores it's, everywhere. Yeah, I like crazy. It. I run out of shit to watch. That's why I like it. And I like to play shit in the background when I'm like sleeping or working. Yeah, I feel what, you, what are you. What are you binging? What so, kids show are you binging? Net- <laughs> or what trash fucking reality? I'm real show big on trash and cartoons. Lately. Bachelorette's back. Uh, Daniel the Tiger. Wow, fire. Also, <laughs> don't sleep on that. Uh, no, uh, a scary one for for a spooky season for Halloween. <laughs> the Haunting of Bly Manor on Netflix. Do you like horror movies? Uh, I mean, I'm not a horror guy. I'm not a horror guy at all. <laughs> Melissa wants to watch Halloween movies with you and like throwback Halloween movies, and I like you guys have Netflix, re- right? Obviously, refuse. Yeah, yeah. yeah, start the Haunting of Bly Manor. I just started it yesterday. Cool, it's kind of good so far, but it's the same one as the Haunting of Hill House, which I think was last year, but now it's the Haunting of Bly Manor. 
Just watch it. I can't. It's, really... like, it's like reality shit or no? No, no. It's, oh. it's like an actual just an show, show on Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Anything with the haunting in it? I probably haven't watched. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's actually super scary. So. Big hocus pocus guy. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I'm talking about. The throwback oh, Halloween yeah, stuff is a huge no for yeah, me. Yeah. Huge no for me. Just Halloween's not my holiday, by the way. Hands down, least favorite. Really? What do you like? What's your favorite? The, Christmas, Thanksgiving, do, like I think Halloween is just a delay to get to Thanksgiving. I love Christmas. Halloween. Really? Yeah. I'm are you, like, are you a big dress up guy? Yeah, 100. percent You guys don't like dressing up? No, Drew's yeah, house like gets decorated for Bro, every my house holiday. is like fucking crazy right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Melissa goes wild with Halloween Columbus decorations. Day? Do we decorate for Columbus Day? No. <laughs> I think Columbus Day is better like, than oh Halloween. He's got a new yeah. theme in his house. I'm like, he did everything. Move the couches. And stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Carolyn decorates everything. Got it. But St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, Looking Halloween, good. Thanksgiving, Christmas, all that shit. All awesome. right. Let's let's end it on a high note. What are you binging right now, too? What do you got for the people? You got, you got some streaming, some podcasts, some books, some movies? I know he's binging. Actually, uh, a really good podcast I've been listening to is actually um, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. He has a book, too. It's just really interesting just how to like drive home the message. But he has really interesting guests based on different parts of uh, businesses, like you know whether it's sales or, or, or marketing. And it's, he's awesome. He's really good. It's, it's, it's very simplified. It's just some people are just trying to complicate things way too much as opposed to yeah. just clear up the message. There okay, I like that. Good there podcast recommendation. Well, thank you again for coming on, my man. We all love you. Appreciate it. Thanks Guys, sure, yeah. make sure you check us out uh, on Instagram at the Residency Pod. Go to Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure you subscribe. Give us five stars. Write a review. Um, full video on YouTube. Yep. Let's go. See you next week. Boom. Boom.